Order, and I invite you all to stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance with us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could we have the roll call, please? Mayor Boardman. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Boutros. Here. Commissioner DeWeese. Here. Commissioner Harris. Commissioner Hoff. Here. Commissioner Nikita. Here. Commissioner Sherman. Here. Our first uh, order of business is proclamations, congratulatory resolutions, awards, appointments, resignations and confirmations, administration of oaths, introduction of guests, and announcements. The first announcement will be from our city attorney, Timothy Courier. Mayor and Commissioners, there has been much dialogue regarding events that occurred at the last city commission meeting. The issues are simple. The Open Meetings Act provides that citizens are allowed to comment at a meeting of issues not on the agenda. This is a right of free speech. The Michigan Campaign Financing Act states the city cannot authorize the use of any public resource to support a political campaign or candidate. The conflict that occurs between these acts is when individuals wish to use the public resources of the governmental cable television channel paid for by the city of Birmingham for the purposes of advocating for their political position or candidate that is use of a public resource. The use of the government channel is about question of public resource. By the city, allowing the channel to be used for political speech gives the appearance that it has been authorized by the city, which it has not. This is not the intended to impinge upon anyone's free speech. From this right forward, I am recommending that we are going to ask for those who wish to address an issue on the ballot be allowed to speak first at the public comment section of the agenda. At such time, the city will turn off the broadcast of the meeting for public comment section. There is no law that requires the city to bro even broadcast its meetings. I believe that this is a solution to allow free speech at a public meeting in accordance with the Open Meetings Act and not violate the Michigan Campaign Financing Act. We will ask that all individuals be respectful in making comments and not to make personal attacks on individuals or other institutions in the city. And all comments will be limited to two minutes. So we get the public comment section. There will be a brief recess. Uh, we'll ask who wishes to speak on these issues to determine how much time we have to turn off the TV for. Thank you. All right. On November 12th, 2018, when I was sworn in as mayor, I took an oath of office that I would support the Constitution of the State of Michigan. I also agreed in writing to be bound by a Birmingham City Ordinance that requires me to comply with the laws of the state and of the city. All of the other commissioners sitting here today and every person appointed to a city board must take this oath and enter into this agreement to comply with the laws of the state and the city. The Michigan Campaign Finance Act was enacted by the state of Michigan uh, in 1976. It doesn't matter if I like or dislike the Michigan Campaign Finance Act. It makes no difference if I agree or disagree with the act. <clears throat> and whether it is bad policy or good policy doesn't matter. As mayor, I do not have the luxury to make those judgments. I swore an oath to abide by the law, and the Michigan Campaign Finance Act is a duly enacted law of the state of Michigan. When City Attorney Courier recommended to me to adjourn the meeting of July 8th in order that the city of Birmingham did not run afoul of that law, I had no choice but to adjourn. Tonight, we will follow Mr. Courier's advice in the manner in which he gave it, and I will remind you of that when we get to public comment later in the meeting. 
Mayor, if I may add? Yes. I want to confirm that I did recommend to you that in light of the, the meeting getting a little heated, that you could adjourn the meeting. A uh, number of reporters asked me, had we ever removed anybody from a Birmingham City meeting, trying to compare us with the Detroit Charter Commission. And in the almost 28 years I've been here, we've never removed anybody from a meeting here, and that's not the way that this body has conducted itself. And that was my recommendation to you. All right, thank you. Moving on to a really happy occasion. Tonight, we are celebrating Commissioner Harris's birthday. And it is our custom to sing happy birthday to him. <laughs> so get ready. Okay. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Andy. Happy birthday to you. As I always say, it sounds much better when I don't sing it. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Much appreciated. The Birmingham Shopping District presents Day on the Town, the biggest shopping day of the year in downtown Birmingham. This will be on Saturday, July 27th from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. Birmingham merchants will place their discounted merchandise on sale around the Maple and Old Woodward area. Parking is free in all parking structures all day, a good thing, and at meters throughout the event. So put it on your calendar. There's some really good sales to be had. The, the, uh, on the same day, the Birmingham Fire Department is offering an American Heart Association recognized CPR class from 8 until noon, Saturday, July 27th, at the Adams Fire Station. Cost of the class is $45. You may register by calling the fire department at 248-530-1906. The City Commission it's, extends its thanks to James Cunningham for his service on the Birmingham Museum Board and wishes him well in his future endeavors. And finally, In the Park Summer Concert Series continues this week on Wednesday, July 24th with Sky Island Band, which is a Motown Blues Jazz Band. I'm sure they're really good if they can combine all of those. It starts at 7 p.m. in Shane Park. Next week, the concert is again on Wednesday, July 31st, Thornetta Davis, Funky Rock and Blues begins at 7 p.m. also in Shane Park. So that should be a lot of fun. Moving on now, we have an interview uh, to uh, for the Birmingham Museum Board. I hope Judith Kiefer was able to come she tonight. Is. Ah, I didn't notice. Come on up and tell us, of course, uh, you can introduce yourself and just let us know why you want to continue on. Well, you already received my application, but I've been on the board for two years, and I know Racklin was concerned about my attendance. Um, I've had an extended illness in the family that required my physical um, attendance to be with him. He has rallied, but meanwhile, that hasn't changed my enthusiasm or actually my participation. Um, we have a marvelous director, and she acts as a conduit between those members of the board who may not be at a meeting uh, and those who are at the meeting. So we've made a lot of progress over the last couple of years, as I know you know, because we're furiously working on our plans for the grounds. We have more education programs that we've extended. We're online, and I hope people here will go over and visit us because we're always looking for more volunteers both physically and financially and we're going to make some big changes um, in terms of bringing back how the property once was and get invasive species off our property and also we're working on the upkeep of the buildings themselves if you have any other questions let me know oh 
my family member has rallied, so hopefully that will continue. Um, if you have any other questions, please ask. Any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Commissioner yeah. Hoff. <laughs> in, in view of that. Yeah. I'll move the nomination of Judith Kiefer. All right. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Good presentation. How about uh, taking your oath of office? Could you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of this state and endeavor to secure and maintain an honest and efficient administration of the affairs of Birmingham, free from partisan distinction or control, and to perform the duties of the office of the Birmingham Museum Board according to the best of your ability? Whoops, I need you to sign. Thank you. Moving on now to uh, section four of our agenda, which is the consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion and approved by a roll call vote. <coughs> there will be no separate discussion of the items unless a commissioner or citizen so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered either under the last item of new business or immediately uh, in, during this part of the agenda. Commissioners, any? Uh, Commissioner Hoff? A. Any other removals? Uh, Commissioner Nikita? Yeah, um, I will be recusing myself from item A since I was absent that day for that meeting. Um, so I guess take note when we do the um, approval or what have you of that. The other item I would like to pull is F. F? <clears throat> okay. Any other commissioner want to remove an item? Anyone from the public want to remove an item? Seeing none, uh, I think we'll go ahead. Oh, I'll move to suggest a resolution uh, excluding items A and F. And, uh, and we'll noting vote. the we're recusal. Not, we're, not, we're not voting on that, so I don't have to note the recusal. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Mayor Boardman? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Boutros? Aye. Commissioner DeWeese? Aye. Commissioner Harris? Aye. Commissioner Hoff? Aye. Commissioner Nikita? Aye. Commissioner Sherman? Aye. All right. We can wait on mine. We might as well take care of it. Yeah. Uh, it's a I short agenda tonight, so. It's simple. Okay. Uh, mine has to do with the um, Special City Commission meeting minutes of July 1st, and on page 7, there's reference to someone in the middle of the page, and the gentleman's name is not Robinson, but Robertson, and it's been written in there twice, and I thought we should correct it. And that's my only correction, and with that, I'll move approval of the minutes. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Except no, note that I'm note that, using from, Right, yeah, got that. And uh, as to F, Commissioner yes. Nikita? Yes, just um, briefly. Uh, one is this is the decorative uh, aluminum fence to, re to replace the wooden fence that we have along Old Woodward. <clears throat> the only thing I would state that uh, is I've found that uh, and I'm not sure how far back this goes, it doesn't matter, maybe, maybe Lauren doesn't even that fence uh, selection, the wooden fence selection that we've used there and elsewhere throughout the city seems highly appropriate for a, an urban condition. It's basically a, a wooden, um, frankly, it looks like a, a rural farm type of fence condition, and it's, it's very unusual and odd. And I know it's, it's, not, it's failing and we're replacing it with, a, with an aluminum metal fence, which I think is far more appropriate. But I would, I would also take note, and I think that this is something that should be looked at, wherever that fence type happens throughout the city, mm -hmm. 
it seems very inconsistent with the general infrastructure that we've created in all kinds of areas. And I would suggest that we take another look at, since that seems to be, have become some standard that we've used in a number of locations, including the, this one, which now we're replacing, we're replacing, I would suggest that we take a look at that as a standard and maybe look at upgrading it. Maybe we need a review, design a review, or what have you. But um, and maybe not this aluminum fence as a, as a, as a, as the alternative in all the locations, but I'm just suggesting I think using this fence should be reconsidered in my mind, and I think it obviously doesn't hold up at least anyway. But um, I just wanted to bring that up because this is the time when we're looking at it, and that going forward, I think maybe some consistency in, in rethinking would make more sense. So great, thank you. That's it. All right. So with that, I'll move the suggested resolution of item F. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We have no unfinished business tonight. Now we'll move on to new business, which is item six on our agenda. <coughs> and our first item uh, under there is a, so a petition uh, that has been brought by residents along Wimbledon. And I note that we received tonight an additional um, additional information that more uh, signers had uh, agreed to this petition. So, good evening, Mayor and fellow commissioners. As you may recall, last meeting uh, during the Cape Seal public <coughs> hearing, that several residents from Wimbledon expressed uh, interest in wanting to improve their street, not just get it Cape Sealed. So the commission said as long as they came back by the 19th, that was last Friday, with enough signatures, they would consider it. By the time the report was written, um, they had 47% in favor by the owners. And if you do look at the frontage, they had just under 52%. Um, as of this morning, uh, the petitioners brought in four more signatures that were verified, uh, increasing those numbers uh, to the owners to 51.8, and then uh, slightly more than 53% if you look at footage. Um, so that's the new information that uh, we're bringing forward. I do know that there are several residents here from Wimbledon, including a couple of the petitioners that have sent the petition around. So I don't know if you want to hear from him or not. All right. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm sorry, Austin. Okay. Um, I just, uh, I th all right. Go ahead, Commissioner Hoff. I was just going to suggest that the petitioner approach. May I ask? Go ahead. Okay. Um, I wonder, did engineering have a meeting with the residents on Wimbledon yet? That is of yet. Our, our, our standard process is that once we have the petition with enough signatures, then we would do a booklet and have an informational meeting. But due to the time constraints, we weren't allowed that. We weren't. A, we didn't have time to do that yet. Okay. I also want um, a little. Um, explanation of the uh, other streets that you're including. You're including a. a um, on Twin Oaks Lane and um, small well, section of Abbey and a small section of yeah. uh, Poppleton. But it says two um, properties on Twin Oaks, but on the map I have it only I think shows one. Yes, the, the, with Twin Oaks, uh, the petitioners were a little confused as to if that should be included or not. So they, I believe they have not reached those, uh, contacted those homeowners yet. No, but how did you come up with two? It shows one on the map that I see, 187 Twin Oaks. Okay, as so I said, there's two on here. Two, what, two homes or two people unsigned? Two Twin Oaks Lane owners. Right, and they are north of the 187 on that blue. Those are the two houses north of there. And I don't believe the petitioners have approached those yet. Oh, the so... Uh, the one in blue means that they've already signed. Correct. I see. Oh, and there are two more. There are two what? more on Twin Oaks that have not been approached yet. Okay. I understand. Because there Thank was some you. confusion as to whether to include that in the project. All right. Not. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Sherman? It, it seems to me what, what, what we had talked about was removing Wimbledon from the Cape Seal. Uh, program if they uh, were able to circulate a petition. They've done an admirable job. Um, I congratulate them on getting this done in uh, near record time. And um, personally, I don't need to hear from them. Um, I feel very comfortable based on what we have here in doing exactly what we said we were going to do. So, 
you know, I, I think we can just congratulate them, and uh, this is, is a great way to get Wimbledon improved and move forward. So, so I do have a question of the uh, petitioner, though. So thank you, huh? Austin. Yes. Is there someone that's representing the petitioning group? You could, yeah. Good, good evening, Mayor, Commission, Dominic Police from 824 Wimbledon. Thank you. The question I have is whether every household on Wimbledon was approached. So the ones that didn't sign, were they also approached? The answer is yes, they were approached. Okay. But we do not have feedback from 30 households on Wimbledon and oh. the affected properties. All right. As long as they had an opportunity to participate or ignore it as they've Absolutely. apparently done. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Commissioners? Question. Commissioner Harris? The, the latest figure, which is over 52 or over 50%. Yes. 51.8. Uh, that include the additional properties referenced in the memo we received? That includes four, four additional signatures that came in this morning. The new numbers that I gave you, the 51.8% and over about well, 54 if you go frontage. Okay. And that covers the entire geographic area that's exactly. at issue? Okay. Yes. That was it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So we have no resolution at this time, right, Mayor? No, this was just information based on the direction of the last meeting. Sure. However, we'll have to dis so do we decide in the next item? Yes. All right. Okay. So no action on this. And now let's go on to new business B, a public hearing of confirmation for the 2019 Cape Seal program. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> Got to get my papers in order. I'm going to open the public hearing. This is from previous. Could you clarify to the people coming what we just did? It wasn't clear to me that. All right. So, at our last meeting, uh, where the Cape Seal, which is that slurry type material that's put on unimproved streets, uh, was discussed to go on a number of streets. And many of the residents on Wimbledon felt that it would be better for them if they were taken off of the Cape Seal program and instead their street become improved by adding gutters uh, and uh, uh, so, you know, an engineered street. So, it was kind of last minute and we talked and they were quite enthusiastic about and hopeful that they could get the number of petition signatures they needed, which is when a street is going to become improved, the neighbors have to agree, at least 51% of them agree to incur the expense of improvement and after it's improved, the city will maintain it for the rest of its existence. So we, knowing that tonight we would have to go forward with making final plans for the Cape Seal, we allowed the neighbors the two weeks in between the two meetings to get their petition signed. And uh, they were very busy because they accomplished the goal. <laughs> And congratulations on that. I know it took some uh, extreme effort, and it's commendable. So now we're moving on to this public hearing to confirm the streets that and households that will be uh, accepting the Cape Seal. And I suspect we're going to eliminate Wimbledon, but we will stay tuned. We'll see. All right. Good evening, Mayor, Boardman, and Commissioners. I'm Teresa Klobuchar, the Deputy Treasury, Treasurer for the City. Um, tonight, I recommend the adoption of the resolution before you confirming Special Assessment Rule 892, 2019 Cape Seal Program, defraying the cost over a, a one-year period with an annual interest of 6.5%. Okay. Any questions? Commissioner Hoff? Well, I think we should remove Wimbledon from this list because the streets listed are Norfolk, North Lawn, Worth, Wimbledon, Pleasant Court, Lakeside, Croft, and Sheffield. Now previously Lakeview was among them, but Lakeview 
uh, has been re removed because they petitioned for um, an improved street. So in my opinion, we should also remove Wimbledon knowing that then this will probably not be done this year. Is that correct? This will not correct. be this year. That's correct. Okay. So that this would be considered, Wimbledon, like Lakeview, will be considered individually next year for the next year's uh, paving program. Okay. Any other comments or questions by the commission? Thank you. And um, comments from the public? None. In that case, uh, I'm going to close the public hearing. Okay. Commissioner Sherman. I'm going to move the special assessment district excluding the properties that would be subject to the Wimbledon Street. Um, so uh, Wimbledon between Woodward and Adams. I second it. Excuse me, I was about to sneeze. <laughs> Any comment on the motion by the commission? Anyone in the public have a comment? I just would like to confirm that your motion is, is in alignment with our intentions. Yes. Thank you. Exactly. It is. Any other comment from the public? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Wimbledon, good job. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Moving on, please, to item C, which is, again, the Cape Seal project. And this is who's going to do it. Yes. Go ahead. So uh, in April, uh, good evening, commissioners, Mayor Boardman. Um, in April, we put out, we solicited for bids for the per unit prices for the various procedures related to Cape Seal treatment. Uh, on May 7th, we opened those. Um, we had two bidders, Pavement Maintenance Systems, Inc. and Highway Maintenance and Construction, Inc. Highway Maintenance was lower across all but one of the categories. Uh, the Public Services Department, having worked with them previously, recommends also awarding this to highway maintenance. All right. Any questions, Commissioners? Commissioner DeWeese? Just to confirm, uh, this removal will not have any effect on the bid other than less coverage. Yeah, and that it was advertised as such in the RFP that for contingencies such as this, the, the contractor is aware that at any point some quantity of streets can be removed. Okay. I, I have one question or co perhaps comment. I noticed that highway maintenance was lower in all two, four, there are six categories, and in five categories, this was the lowest bidder. But in one odd category, they were twice as much, which is manhole adjustment. So um, could you explain that situation? Yeah. So that's a standard bid item that's been in our uh, RFPs as long as I've been reading the, the old historical ones. And that's on occasion, there, there's an instance where a manhole needs to be adjusted such that um, it improves the drivability or for other reasons potentially. So that's always been an item on there um, that they could, that contractor could do that work. Our, our crews are able as well, but for convenience, they would be able to do that. Uh, for the two projects I've worked on so far, it hasn't been exercised and previous to that, um, it was, wasn't was exercised. It's very rare to get used. So yeah, that was a concern, but um, I don't expect to use it. And for this project, there are no locations where that may be needed that we've identified. Okay, good. Any other questions? All right. Commission? Commissioner DeWeese? No, the suggested resolution. Second. Okay. Any comments from the commission? Comments from, did I see a hand? No. Oh. Comments from the public? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Now we have another public hearing regarding uh, the special land use permit for a new bistro in town. I'm going to open the public hearing. Yes, good evening. Just give me one minute. I'm going to pull up the plans so we can see. Uh, 
Okay, uh, as you know, every year the City Commission uh, considers applications for new bistros throughout the city. Um, they did not, you did not end up approving any in October, so there were, was another um, selection period in April. We had two that submitted, Brooklyn Pizza and Pernois for new bistros. Pernois is now moving forward and they're here tonight for a special land use permit approval and final site plan approval. Um, you gave them the initial go ahead to move forward with this. This is for uh, the former Cafe Via space at 310 East Maple. So uh, for all of you know that you can see the picture on the left there shows the frontage where the, their curtains are currently there, you know, for Cafe Via. But it also runs down the side of that pedestrian via and it opens up into the alleyway in the back. So they are here tonight for your consideration of their special land use permit. I'll just go through some details with you. They did go to the planning board um, and the planning board did recommend approval with several conditions. Uh, the applicant has complied with those conditions and the plans have been altered as a result. Uh, the applicant is Nuo, Nuovo Holdings, hopefully I said that right, owned by Luciano Del Signor and Ryder Del Signor, and they are the ones seeking the approval. As you know, this property uh, is zoned B4 in, in D4 in the downtown overlay. A bistro is permitted in the downtown <clears throat> overlay and also in B4. Um, as you also probably remember, we changed the definition of bistro a little while back, maybe four or five months ago. So now you can have 65 seats inside, same as before, and no more than 65 seats outside. What they're proposing here is 58 interior dining seats plus seven at a bar. So the total would be 65 for inside. The bar is staying in the same location. Actually, hold on and I will pull up the plan. <clears throat> they are still proposing to have outdoor dining and use the same outdoor dining canopy area that Cafe Via previously used. So the, the drawing on the right contains everything, including uh, showing how you can walk around. So just to give you an idea, this is Maple along here, the sidewalk. Then there's the pedestrian via with the little canopy where you walk under right now. There's a little fountain here. And you open, you come out into this alley space here, the plaza. There's the fireplace. This is the former Cafe Via's enclosure system. They are proposing to keep the same roof and canopy. Um, they were hoping to keep the eyes and glass. We did in inform them that eyes and glass is no longer permitted for outdoor enclosures, for outdoor dining. So they have removed that. They've noted on the plan that the, that the roof basically will stay. The structure will stay. It will not be enclosed with eyes and glass. So this is also a pedestrian passage in the back. And as you know, there's another one that goes out next to Clark Hill up in that location here. So the main entrance is staying where it, it was for Cafe Via. Come in. Here's the bar that I mentioned, staying in the same location. They are proposing, as I mentioned, 58 indoor seats. They are, uh, if you walk along the front, they're up here in this area. Cafe Via used some of this space, but there was previously a little flower shop here. It was open to Cafe Via, and I think it was run by the same uh, owner, but it, it, it will now be gone, and they are proposing storefront tables all along the front as they're required to. They do, of course, have the full service kitchen like Cafe Via did. They're proposing to utilize that as well. They are proposing um, <clears throat> the seven seats at the bar. As you know, under a bistro ordinance, you can only drink, you can only basically consume alcoholic beverages if you're standing or seated in a defined bar area or seated at a table during throughout the restaurant. They are not proposing any dance areas or any entertainment. Um, as I mentioned, the tables are all along the front window. They are proposing to remove the heavy draperies that are outside hanging from the columns out there, so it will become a lot more visible to see what's going on inside the restaurant. Uh, in addition, the glazing will stay the same, and as you know, Cafe Via had been there for a long time. They were grandfathered in. They're still proposing that. They have well over the 70% glazing on this side and this side. They're a little low back here, um, but obviously it's a little unique in that they have three frontages that look out onto quasi-public space or public space. Um, the applicant has provided a signed copy of the contract. Uh, they are providing or proposing the outdoor seating. As I mentioned, at a bistro, they're required to have the outdoor seating. Previously, um, 
Cafe Via had significantly more seating. They're scaling it back and they're just keeping it pretty uh, open underneath that canopy structure with two tops lining the building and then four tops out here for a total of 26 outdoor dining seats. So they're well below the new 65 outdoor dining maximum. Um, one of the issues the planning board was originally concerned about was that the drawing was just like this. This was the original one. And it didn't show the sidewalk and the barrier to make sure there was a five foot pedestrian path along the front, down the alley, and around here to walk through the passages. So they have made that provision clear. They have provided that. They were also did not have a trash receptacle shown for the outdoor dining area, which is required. They've added that. Um, the applicant has indicated <clears throat> that the restaurant is proposed to be open from Tuesday through Saturday from 5 to 11 p.m. with the outdoor dining being open until 12 a.m. so that people can stay outdoors a little bit longer and enjoy the ambiance. Um, with regards to parking, there's no parking required, of course. They're in the parking assessment district, so they are entitled to rely on the public parking system. Nothing is changing with regard to vehicular access because there is none to this site. Um, pedestrian access is staying the same, as I mentioned, same location for doors, same location for outdoor dining, the via staying the same, and so on. Um, with regards to the streetscape, obviously the streetscape is already improved along Maple here, uh, and then Obviously, it'll be updated for the next phase of the Maple Project moving forward. Um, the only thing I would comment on is that the 2016 plan does say that even the pedestrian alleys and passages should be done up like sidewalks. So that one is not the same standard as we generally require with the broom finish and the exposed aggregate. It is exposed aggregate, but it has brick on the sides. However, it's in excellent shape. It's always well maintained. It looks great. As you know, there's different tiles through there. There's a fountain. There's lighting. It, it, I mean, it, it looks really good in that pedestrian passage. So we, the planning board did not recommend any change there. Um, <clears throat> With regards to lighting, there's existing pedestrian lighting along Maple, and there's recessed lighting throughout that pedestrian passage. They're not proposing to add any more. Uh, some comments that were received from the different departments when they reviewed these plans. Primarily, DPS said they power wash the sidewalks three times a year, so they would have to make sure that all their temporary structures were either out of the way or protected in some way. Uh, the fire department mentioned that all exits must remain clear at all times, which is normal. And the building department mentioned that there might be an additional exit required because one of them passes through the kitchen, which is not permitted. So with regards to the changes to the exterior, um, I showed you that picture along Maple. Essentially, they're just clearing off the curtains from the pillars that are there, opening it up, creating a cleaner look along the front. They'll be cleaning the concrete as well that's located on the front of the building. Um, they are also proposing to put this new cherry colored canopy uh, on this entrance. Well, it's a hard canopy now. They're just gonna put the material on it and they're gonna add, they're proposing to add signage, small ones on either side of the canopy and then the Pernois name letter sign on the front of the building as well. There are no changes provided to the side of the building that lines the via or to the back. Everything else will remain. Um, <clears throat> going through some of the outdoor dining requirements, I mentioned what the hours would be, that they have 26 seats, they, they meet the minimum, or they don't go over the maximum, they have the five foot clearance around, they would be required to get an outdoor dining license from the clerk's office should they get approved. With regards to signage, as I mentioned, there's just the one sign here and then the two on the side. They have 54 feet of frontage, so they're allowed 54 square feet of signage. They're well below that. Um, the one on the front that says Pernois has uh, 17 square feet, and it's um, about eight and a half feet long by two feet high, meets all of those requirements. It's mounted, mounted above eight feet. Then there's two vinyl appliques for the canopy, which are you know a foot and a half each, so they're well below their 54 square foot total in any event. Uh, if you note in the planning board report there was some confusion between drawings, different things shown, they've corrected that, so this is what they are proposing at this time. 
With regards to the selection criteria for bistros, we haven't heard this in, a, in quite a while. Um, but, as you know, you did the initial selection, sent it on to the planning board. You want to, the whole purpose of the process is to ensure that it'll be a high-quality establishment that'll meet the city's expectations for restaurants in the city. Um, there are several things the applicant is required to, propo to provide. Uh, one is proof that they can finance it. They have to show their history in operating other restaurants. This ownership group has six other restaurants throughout Metro Detroit. They have provided proof that they have sufficient net worth and income to finance Pernois Bistro. They do not have any unresolved issues with the health department or the city. Um, there were two violations under liquor license for two of their other six establishments. One was a sale to minors in 2017 and one was failure to provide evidence of server training in 2011. So there's six restaurants. Those were the two issues. Um, we do believe that the site plan as proposed does provide safe and efficient pedestrian flow and adequate health and sanitary uh, infrastructure to service the restaurant. With regards to the type of cuisine that they propose, it's, a, it's upscale Italian. I'm just going to scroll through as I talk because there's a lot of photos and, and drawings here that show you the type of atmosphere that they're proposing to have within the restaurant. Um, Here's some of the materials for their, their furnishings indoor and out, and then again, some of the interior elevations, renderings. Um, they're proposing uh, Italian food, a selection of steak, chicken, fresh seafood, pasta, and a selection of an, uh, appetizers and desserts. So we do have some Italian food in town. Um, not that much, but we do have some, but this is a little different with its pairings and its um, information that it, or um, ingredients that they use and the way they match them up with other items. So, I think that is about it. Um, as I mentioned, the planning board recommended approval with several conditions. The conditions were, one, that they add the trash receptacle to that outdoor area, which they have. They get rid of the eyes and glass, which they did. They had to provide an aerial photo showing at least 200 feet surrounding the site, which they did. Um, also, they <coughs> had to confirm that no existing or proposed curbing will be present in the outdoor dining area. On the original plans, it looked like maybe there was something people could trip over along the base of the structure. There is not. They've completed their plans to show that. And then that they submit complete and consistent sign plans for review by the planning department and the chair of the planning board, which they did. So they have met all of those conditions, and I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. <coughs> Any questions, Commissioners? Commissioner Hoff? Well, in looking this over, um, I know that they were required to submit a complete site plan with all dimensions prior to going before the City Commission. Are you satisfied, Janet, that that has all been submitted? Yes, it has. Okay. And then also in looking through, there were quite a few things that were questioned both by the Planning Board and in your report. How about like the projection from the wall? There, there is, oh, for the signage, it meets the requirements of the ordinance. Okay. So it's in compliance. It's in compliance, okay. yes. Okay. And so then you're telling us everything, because as I read, I saw so many different things that were questionable, but you're saying that they've all been brought into compliance. Correct. There were a lot of little minor issues that were inconsistent among sheets or so on. They've corrected all of those, and the plans that you have in your packet were reviewed by both myself and the chair of the planning board before we even put it on for the public hearing tonight. So we're confident that it's covered and it's Okay, compliant. and then I want to ask, in our packets, there are some sheets that um, I'm not sure why they're here, but this is about the deed and names of people that I don't know who they are, the Powells. Why is that in our packet? Well, that was part of the information that was submitted by the applicant for the warranty deed and ownership. Perhaps you might want to address the applicant, but we do require proof of ownership, so we put all that in. I presume... I don't know. You have to ask the applicant that that's to show the, the details of the ownership. Okay. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions by the commission? Commissioner Nikita? Yeah. <clears throat> A couple things, Janet. Uh, just to verify the exterior, uh, you mentioned the ice and glass not being included, but is it is it clear that there will not be outdoor seating uh, regardless of eyes and glass or whatever uh, other alternative uh, between November and April? 
Yes, they're not permitted. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's clear and that's understood and that's not being proposed. It is not. Right, okay. Uh, just to verify that. And then the other thing is on the exterior um, front, right, right, actually near where you just were. Oh, uh, the, uh, the canopy canopy element there that, that, that you mentioned. This? Yes, mm -hmm. at the uh, entrance to the walkway there. The... <clears throat> You you had mentioned that there would be some signage and and uh, identifying that we have in our signage package that we've developed for our passageway and sign in uh, passageway alleys and passageway package we had identified that as being a via um, and designated as such. So does any of what's being proposed uh, conflict with our proposed? Our previously identified plan for uh, via signage and what have you. And you're familiar with all that. I would not say it conflicts. I understand where you're coming from because generally on a public passage, you wouldn't want to see signage for a private establishment. This, however, is a private right. via. So I think that there's nothing in here that does not conform to the ordinance. If I could continue. Yes. Yeah, just, just the, I guess, um, the coordination of, I know it's private and I know they can do, you know, what they're proposing. And I just w was curious on whether or not there was some coordination uh, as to something that would allow us to do what we intended to do and yet uh, have them do what they wanted to do so that there would be no conflict or some potential, I guess, uh, <clears throat> uh, collective thought on how that would work. So we, we do our signage as we think, because I think... Don't well. Correct me if I'm wrong. Do we have a via signage uh, that we intended to put somewhere there, even though it was private, but just identify? I believe no. I believe we did, and that would be something that would come up for the Maple Road project in any event. But what they have there now, this is the same thing. That canopy is the same as what's there now, so it wouldn't preclude us from putting a via sign on a light post or on a sign post of some sort. Okay. This wouldn't preclude us from doing that. And and we don't think it'll be in conflict necessarily. It would just be no. I don't. I don't believe so. Okay. Right. And they're going pretty simplistically with the design of the building and the right. signage. So I don't think it would be. Okay. La lastly, um, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. So on the plan, if you can go back to the plan, please. <coughs> uh, the, yeah, right there. Now, in the front, mm. as you identified, where. Uh, the drapes or the seating would be very visible from the sidewalk. Uh, and that's that's the intention, right? The, right. The, the These are the pillars that are there right now. If you if you were the columns, if you were to walk mm -hmm. along the sidewalk, and if you recall, Cafe Via had heavy, heavy fabric drapes that were not closing the whole area, but then they had large planters that enclosed that area, even though there wasn't outdoor seating, all of that would be removed. Okay, that's exactly where I was going. So, which you probably assumed. So, so the um, the planters that were there, which were four feet tall or higher with plants above, and it effectively blocked the windows from the sidewalk. Um, we we obviously don't propose that here. It's not being proposed. Correct. With the slup of arrangement and agreement that we have, it couldn't be added. Is that true? That's true because it would be tied to the plan. They would have to either A, come for administrative approval or come back through. And I can tell you that we would not administratively approve that. We've certainly heard the comments in the past and right. may have shared some of those <laughs> okay. opinions. So that would not, that's what I want to get to is that <clears throat> the slump that we approve here shows what we, we indicate here on the plan. That would be approved and we wouldn't have, they wouldn't have the ability to come back and add something like the wall of planters that was there before. Um, and uh, and that couldn't be included without an approval Correct. or a change in the slope. Correct. All right, that's what I want to verify. Thank you. Any other questions? Commissioner Hoff? On this diagram, Jana, could you please identify for me what is the protrusion on the right side facing Maple? That little... Uh, this? No. No, no. no. Talking about the yes. this? entrance yeah. to the via. Oh, the entrance to the via? No, I'm the, not. I'm talking about where you okay, were before. Right yes. Here? Oh, what that is. <laughs> it's a bumped out okay. window. Our, it's a bumped out window. It's not an, an entry door or anything. Okay, it's a bumped out window and it's it's And there. it doesn't go into the right of way. It's actually the columns are actually on private property. This property line is out here. Okay. And it's currently there. 
Yes. That way. Okay. And is there any proposed seating on Maple? No. Not on Outside. Maple. No. Outside. Okay. And what is the gray rectangle? What does that signify? That's a little another little off. I believe it's the office lobby. It's not part of this particular approval tonight. I think there's a separate door there and people come in and go up to the offices above. Thank you. So I have a question. And probably the reason I thought you were heading for the uh, VIA, because <clears throat> that's where I'm heading. The protrusion, is that in the right of way? Does that come out to the right of way? I believe it extends into the right of way, yes. And did you say it was grandfathered in, or it is yes. not? It, it, that was that's grandfathered in. That's been there for a long time. OK. The other question I have, I, I just want to further explore the curtains. Mm -hmm. Because on one of the sketches, you can see some wavy curtains. If you can, not one of the pictures. Uh, one probably. of the interior. Yeah. Looking. Yeah, they are proposing some draperies inside, which they are allowed to have. Okay. But they're those are those are shears. They've indicated mm -hmm. they're shears inside mm -hmm. that will be open or closed depending on how the sun is hitting. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, Commissioner Sherman? How is this grandfathered in? How long has the restaurant from the uh, Cafe Via been closed? No, the, the restaurant's not grandfathered in. The canopy that extends above the canopy. Canopy, okay. Right. I misunderstood. Just, yeah. Okay, yeah. now I understand what you're talking yeah. about. Okay. Right. Any other questions? No? Any questions from the public? No? I'm going to close the public hearing. Commissioner, uh, I'm sorry. Mayor Pro Tem Boutros. Thank you, thank you. I'll take that anytime. Um, I believe, as Jenna stated earlier, you know, before I, I go on a high quality establishment that, that meets our city requirement, uh, we really believe a bistro definition, as we stated many times, it's to activate a street. And with such a wonderful establishment coming to activate not just half of Maple on the other side, but also the pass through <coughs> from Maple to <coughs> Old Woodward that meets. And I believe uh, this is a, a, a wonderful establishment coming to our uh, city. And also, most importantly, that meets every requirement uh, from the bistro requirement to the planning board to the building department. Um, I will be honored and happy to move that resolution to accept the uh, SLUP agreement. Uh, the uh, land use permit, and if I have to read it, to authorize the chief of the police to sign the MLC police, and furthermore, pursuant to uh, authorize the city clerk to complete the, uh, the local approval notice. Second. Second. No. Commissioner Hopkins. Oh, Commissioner Hopkins. Comments from the public on the motion. Any further comments, Commissioner DeWeese? I uh, really hope they're successful. I like the notion and the concept. In fact, I hope they're so successful that they will eventually maybe decide to extend into lunch period, too. My wife and I used to go to Cafe Via often during the lunch period. Uh, your concept may not take that into account yet, but I hope you're so successful that you choose to do so. So thank you. Commissioner Hoff. I have a question. Is it pronounced per noir or pernoy? Pernoy. Pernoy. Janet wants to make sure. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> okay. I just wasn't sure. It's pernoy. That's what I thought. Okay. Thank you. Much discussion about the pronunciation, so it's good to hear it from the owner. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have uh, no items removed from the consent agenda to consider now as we considered them earlier. No communications. It is open to the public for matters not on the agenda. To ensure we are operating in compliance with all applicable statutes governing public meetings during the period of the current ballot initiative, and ensuring everyone has the opportunity to share their comments, 
we will, as we previously have done, institute some rules for tonight's meeting. Each individual will be provided two minutes for public comment. Individuals that choose to advocate during this time may cause the broadcasting of the meeting to be paused, but all speakers will be allowed to complete their two minutes as long as they are not a disturbance to the meeting. The city welcomes public comment and wants to ensure its obligations to comply with all governing statutes. And so, can I see the hands or perhaps you can just line up if you wish to speak. Okay. Anyone who has public comment, come forward, please. Um, by the way, I ask that each uh, person who is commenting, by the way, you're not limited on subject matter. If you have a comment on something else in the city, you're certainly welcome to come up. You'll have the same two minutes. Uh, when you do come up, I our clerk would appreciate your giving your name, spelling your last name, please, and your address. Okay. Clinton Baller, uh, 822 Shirley, like the woman's name, Baller, B-A-L-L-E-R. Uh, I have some questions, and the first question is, uh, does your answer to my question consume my two minutes? count against my two minutes. Would you like to answer? The question, say that again, so I'm clear on what you're that asking. You are giving me two minutes and frequently during this period people ask questions and then you answered them. My question is, do your answers to my question consume my two minutes? Before you answer that question about his question, <laughs> I just want you to know that I did stop your clock. And I will tell you that we will not be answering questions tonight. You may pose them for the record, but we will not be responding. All right, your time can start now again. Okay, my comment about this new policy is that I object to it. I object to it strenuously. I object to the fact that political commentary is uh, poorly defined. You have not defined your boundaries here. You haven't said what is and what does not, what does and what does not qualify under this new rule. Uh, I'm very curious about how this rule came to be. Uh, I did not uh, see the commission vote on it. I saw no deliberation on it. I don't know whether it was a rule that was imposed by the mayor, the city manager, or the city attorney. I don't know if the other uh, six commissioners had any say in it. I think that when you cut off the camera, you cut off a lot of people who are watching these meetings. Um, and what you're doing is not right. And because of that, I have been a party to a lawsuit that was filed today, uh, charging the city with, charging the mayor and the city manager with uh, violating uh, the first, first and 14th Amendment rights of myself and Mr. Bloom and violating the Open Meetings Act. I'm sorry? Wrap it up. This means wrap it up? Yep, that's okay. commonly used. I'll be wrapping it up, folks. How much time do I have, Mayor? None. Okay, thanks. Any other public comment? Good evening. Uh, I'm Brad Host, H O S T, 639 Puritan. And thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, before I do, though, could I ask, uh, Patty, would you be kind enough to give those to Tim, please? All right. That, this isn't part of my two minutes. Yes, it is. I know. Would you please give it to him? I mean, thank you, Mr. Valentine. I'd like to talk about the parking deck and the July 5th study. You were kind enough to release that on July 5th. 
it says that the structure is sound and it needs 6.3 million to give it new life. I live in a 100-year-old house. Uh, it's going to go on forever as long as I keep maintaining it. Two questions. Why did you not have the study before July 5th, which is a full two months after you decided to rip it down, the structure? And secondly, why aren't you considering just doing the refurbishment and, and allow that structure to live X number of more years? I assume you're not going to answer either question, but thank you. Would you like me to answer? Why don't we wait till the end? Okay. My name is Beth Davidson. You want me to spell that? Please. D-A-V-I-D-S-O-N. This is one of my first and, meetings. And your address? 600 you West Frank Street. Thank you. This is one of my first board meetings I've attended, and I have to say that I'm very disappointed in what the process has been regarding this new project and the parking deck. I'm disappointed in the dialogue. I'm disappointed in the communication. I'm disappointed in the way that this has been rolled out and the participation of this board and the activities that have gone on here. I think this has been steamrolled to the community. The vote has been rushed through. I don't appreciate the volume of mailers that have arrived at my home day after day for the vote yes committee paid for by I'm not sure whom. I just want to say that I am very disappointed in this process. And it's been a disappointment to me as a Birmingham resident. I love li living in this city, and I've been very disappointed. And this whole process has been very discouraging to me. And if there was any hope that the city was going to get my support for this $57 million project, it was long gone. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Diane with two N's, McKeon, M-C-K-E-O-N. I live at 555 Townsend in Birmingham. I sat on this commission for eight years. I'm truly disappointed in what I've been seeing and the amount of mail I've been receiving for this project. <coughs> Today I received my 10th mailer saying to ignore the lies with three commissioners quoted. I don't know if they were, gave permission or not. However, the fact that they are quoted makes it look like they are supporting the bond issue, that they want people to vote yes, which they do. I get that. But I am truly, truly disappointed in what I've seen and the reaction from our city commission and our city attorney. These people have all been friends of mine for years, but I'm still disappointed. David Bloom, 1591 Stanley. On Memorial Day, I attended the ceremony at Shane Park. Our mayor, Patty Borman, Boardman, made a speech talking about the sacrifices that soldiers made in World War II for our country, defending our liberty, losing their lives, and leaving loved ones to go on without them, and how it went from generation to generation. Millions of men and women died defending our country from the Revolutionary War to present time. And one of those things that they were defending was our fundamental right to free speech. We have three city commissioners that are attorneys, and you all had to take the oath at the bar, and you all had to take an oath of office to be on this commission. We have Mr. Courier in the back over there, who was also an attorney, and I'm presuming had to take the oath of the bar to uphold the Constitution and our laws. At the last meeting, the city violated our First Amendment rights to speak and to petition, and they violated the Open Meetings Act. After that, Mr. Courier disparaged Mr. Baller and I to the Detroit News, and city officials have disparaged us continually to the media. 
our rights as citizens and residents are being trampled on so we can have a new parking deck and develop some property. We now have two federal lawsuits against this city and against specific commissioners because of this mess that this commission has led us to. This is wrong. And I would like to ask each of you individually if you have the courage to answer whether you all individually, as commissioners and as residents in this community, go along with the shenanigans that this commission has been engaging in. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Brad Coulter, 498 Wimbledon, and it's C-O-U-L-T-E-R. Thank you. First off, I'm very happy to see the Wimbledon Cape Seal project has been postponed pending the residents wanting to get curbs and gutters. I live on Wimbledon. I'm in full favor of it. But since I'm up here, I might as well mention the parking deck. Um, I think as I look at it, whether this gets turned down or not or voted in, I think the city needs to be more aggressive on asking for community benefits from the developers. If you look at the Ferndale parking deck project, which also included residential, 50% of the residential units are reserved for a, what they call affordable housing in Ferndale, meaning that people making the median income in Ferndale can afford to live there. Median income in Birmingham is over $100,000 a year, but we've not for, asked for any type of benefit like that from the developer in the residential part of phase two. I also look at the uh, terms of the lease, and I really think you know, we're talking about taking uh, the assessed fair market value of the property being leased. That should be the floor. I think when we did the RFP, we really should have set a much higher lease rate up front so there was no negotiation. And those funds really should have been targeted for something benefiting the community. For example, if you're getting, say, 600000 a year for the lease rate, you could have targeted money toward the senior center, targeted money toward improving playground equipment, adding ADA playground equipment, fixing the ice rink, other things that we've talked about that the city needs, but we're not sure where we're going to find the funding. Asking for community benefits from the developer, especially on the lease rate, is the way to do it. So I know some of the, I'm not sure exactly where we stand on negotiating the development agreement with the, with the uh, Woodward Bates, but I certainly encourage the city to take a much more aggressive stance on what we expect out of the developer. Thank you. All right, seeing no mo uh, no further, oh, all right, one sorry, more. Sorry, I got here late and I don't know quite what I missed. Um, perhaps first, I heard first that. First, uh, we would like you to say your name, spell oh, your sure. last name, and sure. address. Sure, I'm Paul Reagan. And the spelling? Like the president. Your address? 997 Purdy Street. All right, go That's ahead. That's just south of here. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know what I missed, and perhaps uh, if you'll allow, Mr. Courier can reiterate the criteria that I believe were spoken as to what is acceptable speech here in the room this evening. What type of content constitutes political speech? I'd like to hear the criteria, and because you may cut off the sound, for the benefit of the people in the room here as well. So they'll know what's acceptable to you and what is not acceptable to you. I'll wait for the answer. We announced that we would not be answering questions at this time. So it's left to us to discover, grope about, wonder, what's acceptable to this commission. I guess your silence is an acknowledgement of that. That is not an acknowledgement. Thank I stated you. Thank you for not your time. answering questions. Seeing no further public comment, there are a few issues that were raised which we will address at this time. We did not want to take the time away from any speaker to answer questions and have a back and forth. Tim, you want to go? 
Sure. Uh, what we stated earlier in the meeting, there has been much dialogue regarding the events that occurred at the last city commission meeting. These are simple. The open meeting that provides citizens are allowed to comment at a meeting on issues not on the agenda. This is a right of free speech. The Michigan Campaign Financing Act says the city cannot authorize the use of any public resource in support of a political campaign or candidate. The conflict that occurs between these acts is when individuals wish to use the public resource of the governmental cable television channel paid for by the city of Birmingham for the purposes of advocating for their political position or candidate. In that such instances, that is the use of a public resource. The use of the governmental channel is without question a public resource. And by the city allowing the channel to be used gives the appearance that it has been authorized by the city, which it does not. This is not intended to impinge upon anyone's free speech. But at this point forward, we were asked those to wish to address an issue on the ballot be allowed to speak first in the public comment section of the agenda. I, I will add something in addition to my comments. The mayor has directed that we would not turn off any broadcast unless people get directly into advocacy to allow as much public comment as possible, which has happened tonight. Uh, there is no law that requires that the city broadcast its meetings, but the city feels it is important to do so. We believe that with political advocacy in support of a candidate or uh, ballot question, such as a call to action or qu questions that you've got to vote for or vote against, we believe the best solution is to limit the, uh, allow the comments to be made, but to turn off the city broadcast of its meetings. So both the Open Meetings Act and the Michigan Campaign Financing Act can be satisfied. We ask that all individuals be respectful of their comments, and not make personal attacks on individuals or institutions in the city. We also asked everybody to comment their uh, make their comments in less than two minutes. As far as the word advocacy, it is in the Michigan Campaign Finance Act. You can look to that act for definition. Did you have any? Uh... Just there are two questions that were asked previously, and I'd be happy to answer those. The first one uh, was with regard to the parking structure and why not refurbish versus reconstruct. And going back now a few years when the analysis was done as to which structures in the city allowed for the greatest opportunity for expanded parking capacity, the decision was made at the time to pursue the North Old Woodward parking structure solely from the standpoint that it offered the greatest opportunity to expand parking and it was the oldest uh, structure in the system. Not that the structure is failing, we've always indicated that it is sound, however the facade on that structure uh, is failing in regards to ongoing maintenance that's required to keep that uh, attached facade onto the building. Going forward, once that site was identified for uh, this project, we had still pursued an analysis of the building because we still have to take the, the building down potentially. And for that reason, we need to know the structural integrity of that building uh, for demolition purposes if it were to be pursued. So that's the reason we have the report and why that site was selected in, in terms of expanded capacity versus uh, refurbishment. Uh, the, again, the intent with identifying this location was strictly from the standpoint of the existing ground uh, or existing footprint that existed, having a surface parking lot and a parking garage that could be expanded to increase parking, not from the standpoint of having a failing structure that needed to be replaced. I think that's been misrepresented, and uh, that I think answers both questions. Okay, thank you. That and ends. We should also add that the broadcast was not turned off tonight. Yeah, that's true. We did not turn off the broadcast tonight, and I appreciate everyone's courtesy in making your public comments. Public comments. We're now moving on to uh, reports, commissioner reports. There's a notice of intention to appoint to Board of Zoning Appeals uh, at the regular meeting of Monday, September 16th of this year. Commissioner comments. Commissioner DeWeese. Before this came up tonight, I had prepared a comment that I wanted to make because I'm very uncomfortable with this whole process. I'm not a lawyer, but I have a sense of when an interpretation of an application of the law does not feel correct. 
I do not understand why the city attorney directed the mayor to end the last commission meeting to stop some individuals from expressing certain points of view. I do not understand the rationale for not allowing individuals to make comments on any topic in front of the city commission. Virtually every comment made at a city commission meeting is political in some form or other and is a form of political advocacy. Individuals expressing their opinions or concerns are not the city advocating for or against any topic. It is the individual so advocating. Based upon what you supplied, that's the city attorney, such advocacy is legal per Michigan Campaign Finance Act section 169.257 section 3.3 where quote, the production or dissemination of factual information concerning issues relevant to the function of the public body, unquote, applies. The individuals were questioning the validity of information provided by the city and were to, pro, trying to provide new information for consideration by the city commission. Note that it is legal in section 3D for all individuals to have an equal opportunity to use the public facility to express their views. To me, the city should not show favoritism or discouragement of any comments by individuals or groups advocating before it. I do not understand how a distinction can be made that some points of view, positive or negative, are not appropriate for public comment, or in this case, even public broadcast. Comments are made by individuals, negative or positive. They provide an opportunity for the city to answer. If it chooses, with information and not advocacy by the city, if one chooses to be literal, the very fact that a person or group shows up at a city commission and speaks is a use of public resources. Taken to the extreme, no one would be allowed to advocate a point of view as a city commissioner meeting since public resources would be used even without it being broadcast. None of the comments that were made for the individuals disallowed of making comments at the recent city commission meeting or a violation of those listed as prohibited for any show produced for, with, or by BCTV. If BCTV feels that something is not appropriate, they can make the choice to not broadcast it. This is not a duty of the city or any governmental entity. The basic notion of freedom of speech is the right to express any opinions without censorship or restraint. Even though I'm not a lawyer, I am aware that the right is not absolute with common limitations or boundaries to freedom of speech being libel, slander, obscenity, pornography, sedition, incitement, fighting words, classified information, copyright violation, trade secrets, food labeling, non-disclosure agreements, the right to privacy, the right to be forgotten, public security, and perjury. None of those were involved with the persons not being allowed to speak at the city commission meeting. Freedom of speech is a key concept of the U.S. Constitution's Bill of Rights and the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. If any mistake is made in the interpretation of the laws or practiced by government at any level, I believe it should favor openness and free expression. To me, the interpretation of law to protect, to prohibit, quote-unquote, political advocacy at televised meetings is misplaced. I find it ironic that the denial of speech has strengthened the mistrust toward the city and helping encourage a no vote on the bond issue. The city has the information needed to address the concerns without seeming so heavy-handed. I've always thought of Birmingham as a place where people can express their concerns without governmental interference. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know exactly how the law, but I read the relevant passages, and to me, it seems that there was grounds uh, for those individuals to speak that were within the Michigan campaign law because of what they were doing, uh, particularly when Mr. Bloom came up and was asking questions for additional information and providing additional information, he was cut off. That, that's my comment. I'm just, I had to say it because I'm so bothered by the abruptness and the heavy handedness that I feel, and it doesn't seem right to me. Whether it's legal or not, I am not sure because I'm not a lawyer, I can't express that, but it feels wrong to me. Any other commissioner comments? 
Advisory boards, committees, commissions, reports, and agendas, none. Legislation, none. City staff, we have received the parking utilization report. We also received a notice of hearing for the electric and gas customers of Consumers Energy and a similar notice from DTE about raises to our use of gas and electric. Meeting is adjourned.